Okay, so she went through a lot of different types of type really fast. I want to break down the most specific ones that we'll talk about and we'll use in your book. So the first one here is serif. So serif fonts have the little feet that are highlighted here in the yellow. And in general, serif fonts are easier to read in long text blocks. Sans serif, the word sans here means without. So without serif would be the font that do not have the little feet on the letters. We have decorative fonts like the one down here on the bottom left. And these would be things like these block letters, it or it could be special fonts that have that fun type of look. Script fonts are the ones that look like cursive letters. So these sometimes can be hard to read depending on how cursive-y or how flowy or scripty the font is. I'm gonna break down a couple of different terms that are used specifically with serif fonts. So again, serif fonts have the little tiny feet. So the actual feet are what are called the serifs. The baseline is this gray box right here. So this is the invisible guideline that all the letters would sit on. If part of the letter goes below the baseline, that would be called a descender because it's descending or going below. If part of the letters go above the top baseline, that would be the A sender because it is rising above. We also talked about the point size in that video. So point size would be the overall top to the bottom of the text. And 72 points is going to equal one inch. So if you have a font size 72, that would equal one inch printed out on the page. The lowest font size we want to go to is size eight font in our book. When we pick out fonts, we want to use that design principle of contrast. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. So we can use bold versus a light font like this one over here. We could use contrast by size so, and then make that a bigger font versus a smaller font. This also uses contrast with color. So they've surrounded in the background this with black and they've done white. Mixing two different types of font faces work. So this is a sans serif on top and then a decorative font on the bottom. Another way to add contrast to our font. So both of these are done in italics, but again, here's that capitalization. So we've got lowercase versus uppercase. And then we've got the color blocks again over here on the right as another way to add contrast. So I like pairing different fonts together. We just don't want to go crazy. Remember, we need harmony. So if we're combining different types of fonts or typography, we want to keep that repetitive throughout the book. So we're not going to use every single one of these combinations. We'd probably only pick one or two combinations throughout the book. I mentioned this before, but when we talk about different type size, it is measured in points. And again, it's from the top of the ascender all the way to the bottom of the descender. And so these are all size 36 font, but it looks a little different depending on the type of font. So our sans serif over here on the left might look bigger than this script that looks a little smaller because it's slanted. And then we've got this decorative font over here on the right that looks even bigger because it's considered all capitals but they're all the same size font. So it's important to note that we might have to change that font type depending on how it prints out on the page. Next up, we wanna talk about text alignment. Alignment, again, is a principle of design and it's where our text lines up. So when we talk about justified text, there are two lines on either the left and the right side and it goes straight all the way across. When we align left, all of the font is aligned with the left side. When we align right, all of the font lines up on the right side. And when we align center, all of the font would align in the center and create kind of that jagged rag on the outer sides. Letting, again, is the space between the lines of text. So normal letting looks like the left side. Expanded letting would look like the right. We have the option to make our text lines closer or further apart in your book avenue. So if I'm looking at this poster and I'm trying to identify this type of font, I would be looking at the 102 years in the making. I'm seeing a very bold font here and it is sans serif because I don't see any little feet at the bottom like of the T's or the H's or the E's 
or potentially you could go with a block type font or sometimes it would even be called a decorative font. It would be justified because we are going all the way to the left and all the way to the right of the picture. We don't have any letting in this example because there are not multiple lines of text. And we are seeing contrast in our font to our images with the color pulled out from the green of their shirts. In this magazine example, we have a couple different types of things. So the first thing is I have sans serif font. I don't see any of those little serif feet. I have some contrast shown here between the super bold block and the skinnier hex over here. I've got a center alignment, so I can see these two right here. If I drew a box around this and drew a line, it would be in the center. I've got hex ride that's aligned to the left, and then I've got Reebok and your move that's aligned to the right. And then if I focus on these four lines of text, I've got normal letting because there isn't massive amounts of space between each of those different lines of text. 